Hi there you guys, I'm Teddy from Bijuteo Beading and today's video is a part of Introduction to Beading series. In this part I'm going to talk about the essential tools you're going to need to start beading. If you want to see the other three parts, here is a playlist with all of them. In first I was talking about different seed beads with sizes and manufacturers. In the second one I told you about the different most commonly used beads with two holes, crystals, pearls, bugle beads and so on. In the third part I was talking about the different type of threads. And now this video I will start with the beading needles. First I want to tell you that when I started beading I started with uneven beads and with a regular sewing needle. Maybe you wonder what's the difference between a regular sewing needle and a beading needle. And that was my question in the beginning. The main differences are several. Okay, I will open two needles to show you. First, the beading needle is a really long needle. And why is it made like this? Uh, because in this way you could pick up a lot of beads with it and put them together on your project and it's really faster to pick them up with a longer needle. Uh, that is why it's made like this. The other advantage is that it's really flexible. You see, you can bend it in any direction like this. And the other main difference between those two types of needles is of the eye. You see how here the eye doesn't make this needle bigger at this side while uh, with the sewing needle here you have a bigger hole and it's wider at this side. So this is the main difference. Now I will tell you about the sizes and the different uh, manufacturers of beading needles. Okay, so the most commonly used sizes of beading needle are 10, 11 and 12. There is also a size 13, which is for really fine and small beads. When to use them? If you use really small beads like size 15-0, if you don't know what size 15-0 is, watch my first video when I was telling about the sizes of beads. But here with the needles, it is the same principle. The bigger the number is, the smaller the needle is. So size 13 is smaller from size 12. Size 12 is smaller than size 11 and size 11 is smaller than size 10. So it's the other way around. What brands did I use and what is my opinion of them? So the first brand that I tried is really inexpensive. This is Pony Beading Needles. They are okay. I use size 10 and 12. They were flexible enough. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about them was that uh, their hole is in general a little bit smaller than other brands and the threading was difficult. That is why when I was using them I had to squeeze with my flat nose pliers my thread uh, to be able to go through this needle. Especially the thread that was not flat like monofilament. The other threads that are flat were easily to go through the eye of this needle. I haven't heard any other beaders saying that uh, the eyes of pony needles is smaller than other brands. I don't know if it is about the lot or something else but this is something that I've noticed. A good thing about this is that when you put your thread on your needle it doesn't move anymore. But if you have to take off something of your project, then it's difficult to put the needle back. The next brand that I use, again size 10 and size 12, is Beadsmith beading needles. They are with bigger eye compared to pony beading needles and the size is absolutely the same. Why I like them better, but this is just a personal preference. I like them better because of uh, their eye being bigger and they are flexible like the pony needles. Uh, the only disadvantage is that they break more. 
They break here usually around the eye or in the center of the eye and I usually break about two needles a month because I'm mainly using these beads meat needles. They are also inexpensive, not as much as the pony needles but uh, similar and you see how those pony needles are bended here at the top and their hole gets even smaller because it's squeezed when I was trying to go through some difficult beads and that is why it looks like this. The good thing about uh, these pony beading needles is that they go with this threader so uh, you could uh, use it to put your thread on and also to remove a wax if you're using wax and the eye of your needle is cloaked with wax. Here is another example of a lot of pony needles. I put them here inside. But you see how curved they get. And when your needle gets curved like this, what you could do is take your pliers and just a little bit do this straightening. And when you do this, it's ready to use. Okay. And the last manufacturer of beading needles that I used are these tulip beading needles. They are done from a company with uh, great traditions of making sewing and knitting tools. And their needles have golden coverage on top of them. That is why they are easy to thread. They are the most expensive ones. But the good thing about them is that when you bend them, they don't change their shape, but they go back to what they were in the beginning. So you don't need to straighten them up and they are rarely broken. So the quality of these needles is absolutely gorgeous and you could use them for so many projects without breaking them. This is the plus. And also their eye is the biggest one compared to the other two manufacturers of needle without making the needle wider at the top. That is what I meant saying. And another trick about threading was that uh, one part of the needle goes inwards and the other one goes outward and you could use the inward part to put your thread in more easily. The other thing that I like is that they come with this uh, plastic tube that is with a cork on top of it and you could put your needle anywhere without punching yourself. Okay, I have another similar plastic bottle here with uh, other beading needles that are no brand needles and they are similar to the beads meat and to the pony needle. Okay, so uh, that was all for the needles. Now I will continue with the other tools. Okay, the next essential appliance that I want to talk about is the beading mat. I have here example of three colors of beading mat. Why do you need it? Because on its surface the beads don't move around and you could pick them up really easily. A good idea is to put this mat that you regularly use on an A4 frame, picture frame, or what I do is on a cord board that I'm using at home. I use light color green color and black color. This is because when I make tutorials sometimes it's better to use black background depending on the beat, sometimes middle background and sometimes lighter background. So if you don't make tutorials I don't think um, you need different colors but uh, this is what I prefer to use. In my next step I'm going to show you the main tools. Okay guys, and these are the most essential tools that I'm using in my projects. Of course, there are more tools for jewelry making, but this is what I mainly need for beading. So the main thing that I'm using in my projects are the flat nose pliers. All the tools I use are from the Topmaster brand. I think there are other good brands out there. 
it doesn't matter so much but these flat nose pliers I use in so many ways I squeeze my jump rings with them I put crimp beads sometimes I squeeze my thread to go through my beading needle to make it flat to go easily through the eye of a beading needle as I mentioned and I also help myself by pulling my needle when I need to go through difficult beads and uh, I can't do it by hand if you understand what I mean I just pull my needle through the most difficult beads okay so this was for the flat nose pliers uh, the next one are round nose pliers these are used in wire work but you could use them in a lot of projects if you want to make your own earring findings let's say or if you want to curve a pin going through your project and want to attach ear wire through it let's say and you could make coils and so many fun stuff especially if you uh, combine beading with uh, wire work okay and these cutters that are from the same brand are used to cut wire sometimes you need to cut a little bit your pin before you make it round and they are really useful you could also cut thread with them it's okay but mainly for thread what I use are these type of cutters that are smaller sometimes I need to cut closer to my work and that is why I use those cutters then they are not for wire only for thread and this is a nice crafting scissors that I got some time ago and it's really sharp and I like it a lot another thing you could use is zippers that is especially made for thread zipping this is a really nice uh, tool that you could get yourself okay guys so this was all for the essential tools that you're going to need for beading if you have anything to add to what i'm saying here please write it down in the comments if you're a beginner and have any questions don't hesitate to ask me i'll answer to all of you if you like what I'm showing you here and you want to see more and more videos like this for beginners or for more advanced beaders, please subscribe and you will be inspired often usually twice a week. By the way, these tutorials I usually post on Thursdays are like a bonus tutorials. You could also like, share and comment. Down there in description you will find a link to my store, a link for PayPal donations to develop this channel, a link to all my social networks where you could ask me anything or you could share your beautiful work that you did following my tutorials. You could also check my second channel Bijuteo Fast Clips. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye from me.